Okay, uh, let's take a break from some war games and do a Euro Pantheon. Uh, first of all, my reason for buying this, I, if you're familiar with me at all, you know, I'm kind of into God games in the sense of games handling uh, religious aspects, the growth of religion, etc. I've always been kind of looking for the ultimate game to sort of simulate uh, the spawning and growth of a religion. If you realize uh, that's why, for example, uh, La Foi et la Glaive was exciting to me, and a number of others, things like uh, uh, Age of Gods or something like that. And by the time I saw this, I, I, I saw, I think, a uh, 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 an introduction and review of it by uh, probably Slacker when I look at the uh, list of who's up there. I thought it would have been someone else, but I, he's the only name I recognize as someone whose reviews I tend to look at uh, fairly often. And he tends to not share my views on a game, uh, but at least give a, a good overview that I can understand really quickly. Hey, am I going to like this or not? And this is one where I could see right away, this isn't what I'm looking for. But it looked like fun. I saw a cheap copy, so I picked it up. Uh, so if you are used to most people's coverage of rules, etc., you don't want to see this. <laughs> I'm going to uh, cover the rules, then go through my playthrough, and then go through my review of the game. The rules coverage... What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically read through the rulebook. This is in part because, hey, it's sort of a tradition for me and it helps maybe some people understand some things. But I'm not, I've played it once before, I'm not really familiar with this. And largely I'm doing it on camera because it's easier for me to focus uh, this way, explaining it aloud. So, well, if you don't think somebody who doesn't know the rules very well trying to explain them from the rule book is going to be useful. Yeah, you're probably right. You can probably find someone else's uh, explanation a little better. Okay, so hitting into that, I'm going, to, I'm going to go over it. First of all, what do we got on the board here? Uh, we got this board of Mediterranean Europe. It's a Euro, so we're going to be trying to run around this little track for who gets the most victory points. It's a four-player game, four different colors. Uh, come with a couple player aid cards, which actually, if I remember correctly, tell you almost everything you need to play the game. There's this rather thick and uh, example-filled rule book, which of course I hate. Uh, I think that the rules could be summarized much, much more easily, all these dots and everything. I, I, I think it can be done a lot easier, but I unfortunately don't remember it well enough to do it any easier. Get these cards. These are set out. These are going to be actions that the players, uh, well, cards that the players can pick. It's sort of a pool that's available. They're also going to be allowed to draw from here. These are uh, some little bonus type things they're able to pick up, which will help them uh, in the game, and we'll see how. These little counters are to mark the different civilizations. Uh, they're going to be picked at random from here and then marked on the track here to indicate who's what. These are minor gods, which are bonus points that can be picked up for various reasons. This foot and this temple, the temple marks the civilization currently in play. The foot uh, indicates kind of the first player type situation. Some minor gods are gods here, which I don't really remember how they show up. Uh, some money, this is able to be picked up through various things. Now this is gonna range from two down to five. These minor gods are kind of interesting. They're going to range, all the low ones are on top, and, the, and they're essentially victory points, and the higher valued ones are on the bottom, which is kind of a neat little catch-up mechanism. It means even if you didn't do well at the beginning of the game, even if you're not in the lead, there's things that have become more valuable later on. But the, you can make different choices based on that. This is the deck of civilizations. This is some kind of bonus tiles. Um, you start the game with one of them. Okay. So... Well, let's look at the setup. I've set up most of the board locations here. Oh, and then there's this bag, which is full of booty. These are special places that are going to be placed uh, on various locations here. On the board near a civilization to make the civilization uh, it, to be sort of the value spots for that civilization to go to. Okay, so let's kind of try to work our way through this. Um, what do we got here? 
So first, uh, we're going to be doing a number of epics, six of them. Uh, each one of them giving players opportunities to score with different civilizations. And what happens at the beginning, well, I'm going to start and call the red player first and go counterclockwise. We'll figure out what, what has to be done within there. But he gets... Well, let me make sure I've got everything set up first. I, you know, I hate this. This, oh, here's a picture. Here's how you set everything up. And then reading all this. Hey. But I've done all that. Uh, what I haven't done yet is some of the things here. So uh, everybody starts with a certain number, three columns and four feet. These are going to be their playing pieces on the board. They have a bunch more in their stock that they can pull out and use based on... Um, something within the game but again I don't remember and trying to face these rules was just uh, too much to do just reading ahead of time. Uh, everybody's gonna get a face town bonus token. Now there's an option where people can get one secretly. I don't know what these do. They got like a picture on them. We'll see what they do when we read the rules. Alright. Uh, and what else? Everybody gets a handful of five cards from the action supply. And those are going to be like this. And I'm going to pause so that I can deal them out. So what you're getting here is kind of the way that I would explain this game if I pulled it off the shelf because we were playing it. Because, hey, it's a fairly short thing. It's just a euro, right? Uh, but I probably wouldn't remember it because I play so many games. I played this a few months ago. Yeah, it's passed my memory since then. I remember it being kind of fun, though. All right. So, at the beginning of each epoch, what we're going to do is, well, we prepare the civilization. The star player draws the top most civilization card and activates that civilization. So we pull one off, and we have Germania to start things off. Now, Germania has some kind of special ability or something. we got to find them. Where are they? They're the eagle. They go here. And, well, let's keep going. Uh, we take a token for the civilization and put it where it belongs. Yeah, I, see, this is the thing. Every damn thing is set out, which is why I don't want to spend the time reading these rules. And as I remember, they kind of play as you follow them. Okay, next he takes the token from the civilization places. Next he takes a random god tiles equal to one more than the number of players and place them face up in the space provided by the game board. That space is over here. We have four players, so we're going to get five of these gods. Now, very unfortunately, these god tiles, which all provide you with special abilities and little points towards things and stuff like that, they're not real gods. That was one of the disappointments for me. I think I probably knew it when I bid on the game initially. But, you know, I kind of want them to not be some made-up gods here. And there's a whole sheet of these gods explaining all their special abilities. We'll go over them as we play. Um, one other player draws random booty from the bag. I like this. It has feet and columns and booty. Okay, and what these are going to go on is they're going to go on these little Germania tiles, and there's going to be four of them placed because I'm playing four players. Now, the rules say with two players you don't use three and four. With four players you don't use four. I think that's a mistake. I don't know. I'm not going to look up to see if there's errata, but to tell you the truth, that doesn't make sense. It only makes sense that you'd have more with more players. So, we'll draw for this space, and we get, and these go face up. It doesn't really matter. They go both ways, I guess. We get one of those, which I think is going to be one of these. We get some kind of cards for this next one. And yeah, I could do them numerically or something, but I don't want to do that. Whoa, we got five of them? That can't be right, can it? I guess it is. Hey, such is life. Uh, we got a little five marker there, whatever that is. We got feet. Feet allow movement. They're cool. And we got a marker. Another sun. He's going to be another minor god. All right. Uh, let's see what else we do. Uh, each civilization has a special characteristic. It is now executed. And then we're going to get 
the temple in the starting space for the uh, uh, civilization. And then we, uh, well, we'll do this every time. Okay, and then they give an example of this and then a variant. Um, okay, now, we haven't executed this special ability, which is listed on this card. It's a seven whoop whoop in both directions, whatever the hell that means. Where is that explained? Well, here it is. Uh, all players adjust their hand size to seven. If you have more than seven, you must discard down. If you have less, you draw more. Okay, well, everybody's gonna get two more cards. So we pause again while I deal out those cards. Okay, we've done that. Now let's look at what players can do during their turn. And we're not gonna just keep playing along while I explain the rules, but this kind of setup happens for each uh, one of the civilizations, so we'll look them up and worry about them as they happen. But here, in your turn, you basically have four things, one of which you may do. You can do a movement, a buy, acquire a god tile, or draw three cards. Okay. Each one of these is a little different, uh, not just in terms of how they how how they work for you know in terms of well movement should certainly be different from you know drawing cards or whatever but also in the sense that movement for example allows all players to take the take an action kind of like when you choose an action in Puerto Rico whereas some of these others are just only you get to do it a little bit less uh, conformity in the in the rule situation so what happens is if you take a movement action you get the big foot okay. And that is a bonus move you're going to get. That gives you one extra step. Then you're allowed to play movement cards, which look like this, these feet, and those are steps that you're allowed to buy. Okay? These are going to come from the, the pieces you have uh, available to you rather than from your stock in the bag or whatever. Uh, um, now, if you have any feet on god tiles, this guy, for example, has a couple of feet. Oh, but those are different than those. So maybe they're not the same, huh? <laughs> one probably means one kind of foot, and one means another kind. And this is the kind of thing you got to get used to. So this guy gives you plus one steps. Each time there's a movement, you get an extra step action, whereas this guy... Uh, gives you a jump ability, which is something completely different. And of course, it's being expressed pictorially so that people who, uh, you know, are using different languages only have to get this several page rule book uh, in different languages. But obviously, you can understand what this all means, right? And it's not too bad, it's just <sighs> icons don't work for me well. Okay. Um, so then you're allowed to play uh, your cards to take moves, and when you move, each step that you get, you can take one of your feet or a column and place it on the board. Now, you can't just place them anywhere, okay? Uh, first of all, feet can go anywhere except, well... You have to trace a line is, is the issue, but in terms of different spaces, and this is how it spells it out. Feet can go anywhere that doesn't have a column on it, and columns can only go on column spaces. Okay. You have to place the first foot adjacent to the temple, but your other feet can be placed adjacent to the temple, adjacent to your own feet, or on your own, or adjacent to your own columns. Okay. So you can build off your columns. Now this is important because later in the game you will have columns still on the board. You won't have feet on the board. Uh, in, between, in between epics you clean up your feet, but your columns stay there. And the columns score points, so they're kind of cool. Um, okay. Columns have to be placed adjacent to your feet, however. And you must place all feet in columns so that they're connected to your temple. Hmm. Well, let's go back. You must play feet adjacent to your own feet or your own columns. Well, that's a little different here. Uh, 
So it looks like you can't place feet out of columns that you've already placed, although it's not absolutely clear. It seems contradictory. Uh, but I think this statement here kind of, yeah, let's draw it all the way across. I hate long columns of words. Um, it should be a nice little <laughs> with numericals and no stupid pictures, and this all could fit on two pages. Um, okay. <clears throat> so, if you put a foot on one of these booty tokens, and you'd have to, of course, trace your way there, and you can see I don't have enough space to get to this one, but I do have enough space to get to this one, then you take that token. Uh, and you get it in your play area. Okay? When you place a footer column on a space already occupied by a footer column of another player, it costs you an extra step. The stuff that you get off these cards and this big foot and whatever. Alright? Uh, you can't place more than two feeder column in any space belonging to different players. So you're allowed to go into a space with another player, but you can't do that. Only two people can be there. Um, and remember, it costs you an extra step to go into an area with another person. And then to complete your turn, you discard the cards you played and take any bonuses from any booty tokens you took. Before the next player takes his turn, each other player is allowed to just play cards and take any of their bonuses from gods in order to do the same action. They can move to What they lack, they don't get this. The other thing is, the person who picked it got to go first, which is often an advantage. They can grab the easy-to-reach thing or whatever. You also may not have foot to, uh, the ability to play feet. Once your hand gets decreased or something, you don't have as much ability to play. And you're limited, of course, by the number of feet you have, which this guy has one too few at the beginning of the game. So I'd better pull him one out to remind me. All right, and now we have examples, and now more rules embedded in here. Uh, you don't have to take a move if you don't want to, but if you choose not to, you get a free card from here. Um, and then the next player clockwise, and I'll be going counterclockwise, gets to take his choice of turns, which could be anything. The buy action. Yes, and I hate these rules. Uh, okay, to buy things, you use gold uh, cards or gold offered from a god tile. Now, do we have a god with gold on it? No, but we could probably find one over here, maybe. This guy has gold, uh, which is for any uh, purchase action. Then you're allowed to make several purchases, or multiple purchases. You can buy sacrifice tiles, that's what these things are, and they'll cost based on the cost listed. This one costs one because it's a level one, a level two costs three, and these are cumulative, so if you have a level one, you, can go, you go up to a level two by paying two more. I think you're only allowed one of those of any type, but I may be mistaken. Yep, you can only have one tile of each kind, so you could have up to your level four here once you've paid a total of 10 gold for it. Those are going to allow you to buy different kinds of things in a different sort of way. Um, what else can you buy? You can buy feet or columns. Each one costs you a gold. Uh, you can place your feet and columns onto the board, including the ones you just bought, but they were, they're going to cost you one gold or two gold for an occupied space. This can be part of your purchase. You don't have to take that move action. It depends on what kind of cards and what kind of ability you have. If you have a lot of gold in your hand, I think there are gold cards in here. There's one. Lower value gold cards. Um, you can use them instead of feet to essentially get movement by taking this kind of action. But you don't get the large foot, 
And other people don't get to do anything here. So by taking a, a purchase action, you can use your gold to get movement without giving anyone else that advantage. All right. You can acquire a god tile. Now, in order to do these, you have to give a sacrifice. Each god has a list of what it requires. So this god would require three of these. Okay. This god requires four of one type and one of another. This one just requires four of one type. Um, now, you can offer sacrifice of cards or tiles. And let's see. I believe... So we have cards that indicate sacrifice points. I believe you don't discard tiles, or certainly not god value. What does this have? So this one's got a specific restriction. It can only be gotten with sacrifice cards. You can't use tiles. Uh, but here it says you must play three of one kind, two of another kind, and one of a third kind, which is somehow expressed by that. as opposed to these others which are expressed differently for some reason. I'm not sure why because it really is the same as if this said 3, 2, 1 on here from what I can remember. Um, all right. Anyway, That doesn't seem to have an ability except permanent scoring, the level of the highest sacrifice. Ah, yes, so whatever tile you have for sacrifice will give you score for that one. I don't remember quite how that works. I don't really care. Um, okay, so the cards that you spend to get a god are always expended and thrown away, but your tiles you get to use each time you buy a god. And then you'll get uh, points for the god based on the epic. And this is corresponding to the epic. Uh, I think it's this number under here. That's the amount of points, victory points, you get for playing a god. But you can only do one god each time you do this, and there's only so many available in each epic. Um, then the, thir uh, the fourth action here is to draw three cards, and that's just pulling from here. Now you have the option of taking a face-up card or a face-down card from the deck. If you take up a face-up card, even though you're allowed three total, you immediately replenish it with another card. So you always have sort of some, some that are available that you know what they are, but if you don't like them, you can take from the pile. Okay, now end of the epic. Okay, well we keep taking turns until one of the following happens. Either the last of the booty tokens is removed from the, top, the, from the board, or the last god is removed from the board. At this point, after the active player finishes his, all the actions he wants to take for his turn, and he's only allowed to pick one major action, but he gets to maybe do multiple things in it, um, then he scores three victory points for winning, uh, you know, for ending the phase. And then he passes the temple marker to the next player to his left, in my case right, um, in order to indicate that will be the first player for the next turn. Now when the epic ends, you take all your feet off the board, but your columns stay. Any god tiles or booty tokens that are left on the board, and there will only be one type left, are removed from the game. And then we start a new epic and set it up again. I'll come back with the scoring in a moment. Alright, let's wrap this up. Uh, 
Now this is at the end of the game? No. At the end of the third and sixth epoch, there's going to be scoring. Okay. Uh, first, you score minor gods. Now remember, you've been collecting these guys off tokens like this, and the early ones that you pick up are lower valued, but later as the game progresses, if you got enough players, in two players, you're probably not going to get very deep into the high valued ones. Um, you flip them all up and you get points from them. Now this is kind of neat because if you get them early though, you get to score them twice. So those early ones that aren't worth a lot aren't necessarily worth nothing. <laughs> uh, and, and, and the values range from one through three, evenly distributed on the top, and four through six on the bottom. So you can see you can actually score as much from some of the low, uh, some of the upper valued ones as long as you get them in the first three epochs. Um, then what else do you get here? Columns. So every column you have on the board, you add them all up, and then you get a multiplier. And the more you have, the more you get per column. So if you only have a few columns on the board, you only get one per. But once you get all your columns on the board, you get 48 points. Of course, you only start with three columns. So you're going to have to use that buy action to pick up more columns to score them. They're going to be a major source of points. The first scoring round, uh, you probably won't have too many. So you may get only two points per column. But you want to aim for as high as you can get in your column scores because that's going to be a big bunch of points. Now, of course, there are also gods that will give you special column, uh, special bonuses, and there's these bonus tokens. Um, we'll go over them during play. I think that's more interesting. But anyway, uh, once you score, you see whoever has the most points wins, and there's a tiebreaker on uh, total number of minor god tokens that you pick up. And just as kind of a, an extra tiebreaker and then you're stuck with possible a possibility of a real tie all right well we'll give this a start but i'll load this uh kind of pathetic introduction up